first time home buyer? He is a first time home buyer and very excited one and I'm so happy to work, be working with him. And welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time watching one of my videos. Hi, welcome. My name is Alexia Nicole. I am a first year flight attendant and also a licensed real estate agent in Texas. So I haven't done a real estate vlog in a long time so I finally decided to just do another one today. Just to give you a little update, um, what I currently do while trying to balance my flight attendant life is any context that I get as far as real estate, I just usually refer them out to agents in my office, AKA my mother. We both are real estate agents with Keller Williams in um, Houston, Texas. So um, I referred her a client, and so now we are out here today going to show about eight or nine homes, and hopefully he picks one and we can write a contract. So come along. Let's see what the house has to offer. So we have a formal dining area as you walk into your left. Open living area. It's nice. And then you have the kitchen. It's nicely updated, fresh white cabinetry, countertops, granite, nice backsplash. So we just viewed the first house. So what exactly is your client looking for, mother? My client is a young millennium, I guess you would call him. And he's looking for a fairly modern home, wood floors, updated granite countertops, um, nice big yard if, you know, if he can find it. But at the same time, it's not a must, must have. Uh, we viewed quite a few yesterday and um, he wanted to see some more today before he makes a decision. What's his price point? His price point is right at the 185, 190 mark. Okay. And how many bedrooms is he looking for? He's looking for three bedrooms, at least three bedrooms, two baths. Uh, something that he can, you know, if it's not totally updated, he can make it into his own, put his own touches on it. So I think we should find that today. Is he a first time home buyer? He is a first time home buyer and very excited one. And I'm so happy to work, be working with him. Is he using any down payment assistance? No, he's not using any down payment assistance today simply because he kind of makes too much money. Um, down payment assistance, you have to make a certain, you can't make over a certain That's amount. Not so, not no, he's Bye. not using any of those today. Okay, on to the next home. All right, so we've made it to our second home. We're in Tomball, Texas, is the area where he's looking for. Tomball, Texas is basically Houston, it's just a suburb of Houston, Texas. Um, this house is at the price point of $183,000. Um, so let's go inside and see what it has to offer. So we just viewed the 
second home and our buyer was not a fan of that one as much. On a grading scale of A to F, he gave it a C. The first house got an A. So mom, what did you think about the home? Um, it was, square footage was good, 2,500. However, it was not well utilized. It was a lot of wasted space. Mm -hmm. And on top of all of that, there was a railroad tracks right through at the back of the property. Yeah, so, right behind the master bedroom. Yes, yeah, so that he was not a fan. On to house number three. Let's hope that one gets a bit of grading. Let's hope. It's the third house. Spring, Texas this is a three bedroom, two and a half bath house. Listed at 189. Let's go see what it has to offer. This is cute. I like it already. Magnetic spice rack. Did they make this? I don't know, but whoever did, that's, that's really neat. ingenious. That wouldn't work for Reese, though. No. <laughs> okay. Another shindig house. <laughs> throw you some, some parties around here. Got some decking going on. This one was built in 2003. Actually, only 1793 square feet. Three bedrooms and two baths. What's the asking price? Asking price on this one is 189.3. How's it been on the market? Five days. Five days, and it's been viewed quite a few times. A, a, a plus. A, a plus. A plus the, plus. the kitchen really sells this house for no, me. Not for me, yeah, the kitchen does, but the openness. You know, oh, the yeah. walls aren't blocked off to the rest of the house. Mm -hmm. You can see, you know. It's not the biggest house. It's really only 1798 square feet. But, but how, much squares, well, how much space do you really need? I think this is enough for him. I, think this I like the layout a lot. I love the layout of this house. Mm -hmm. It's just open. Yeah, no, it's open, open it's but then it's house. still separated yes, enough. Yes, exactly. Where everything doesn't look like one combined. All right, so we made it to the fourth house. This house is four bedrooms, two baths, 1,500 square feet. Asking price, $160,000. Let's go see. house <laughs> our buyer said an F I would just say maybe a C minus just simply because it's a little bit of an older home it's you know small on the inside the space isn't well planned out so on to house number five now let's go take a look we're still in spring Texas springy springy spring so this house needs a lot of TLC it's like a pre foreclosure so they're Selling it as is. There's no flooring in the home. Well, not the entire home, just the living room. The number is. Looks like they snatched all of their speakers and surround sound system before they left. This is something you can run into quite often when people are being forced to sell their home without getting foreclosed on. They just basically take everything they own, move out, and put it up for sale at whatever price. Um, usually a price that will cover whatever they own left on the home or 
Maybe they'll get a little no, bit I'm left, but yeah. This isn't gonna be the home for our buyer. It's not move-in ready. We want something right. move-in ready. And then also when you're getting a government loan, a FHA loan, there yes, are rules yes, yes. and regulations that have to be followed. And this house not having any flooring is something that will not pass for a FHA loan. And that's not something you can negotiate with the seller, especially when it says that they're selling as is. So, you know, if somebody wanted to flip this house or something like that, or had cash or a conventional loan, or had a little more time to put in some TLC, you know, it's not bad, but not for us. So, correction, this is a foreclosed home. That's what you get with foreclosed homes. A lot of people look for those because they, you know, they want to pay less money for the home itself and if they have enough cash to fix it up then they do but that's not what our buyer is looking for so we're on to the next one we are at house number six house number six still in spring texas asking price 180,000. Three three bedrooms two and a half bath about 1900 square feet or so it's built in 2004. let's go take a look There's no bang for the buck. $180,000. We'd rather spend that on the foreclosed home. Next, we're at house number seven. This neighborhood is a little bit older. Um, built in 1997. It is a 2,000 square foot, two story home. Four, four bedrooms and two and a half baths. Let's go take a look. selling your house, clean it before you have people come and look at it. That is key. One seventy two five isn't that horrible but asking price for the square footage. What are the taxes? 3.26. Yeah. A tie for Houston, Texas. Five thousand in or taxes a year. Screamed. It's on the higher side. We like taxes below 3.0%. You have to put some money into this house. What do you like about this one, though? You like the layout? Yeah. The kitchen needs a facelift. Yeah, one and oh, the one the in the master. Yeah, <laughs> made it to our final house of the day, and hopefully of looking. This house was built in 1984. Asking price is $159,000. It's windy outside. It's three bedrooms, two baths, and 1,400 square feet. So it's the smallest one and the oldest one we've seen all day. Let's see what it has. It's a nice, it's a nice neighborhood. I like this neighborhood. It's a little far though. You sleepy? <laughs> Your truck looks nice in the driveway. Oh, 
Oh. Wow. Read <laughs> <laughs> that. Look how they tied it up. You need to snap that. That is crazy. Please do not use no water. Okay. Oh God, real estate faux pas. Okay, this house is a no. This is not, we not even gonna play with the, the option of even. We're just gonna look and laugh. It's for somebody. Oh, definitely, it's for somebody. <laughs> just not us, or at least. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, th this is like, whoever lived here, bought this house when it was first built, has been living here forever. Yeah. Somebody. There's a body out here. Mom. <laughs> so we viewed all the houses for the day. Total of eight or nine? No, seven. Eight. eight, eight. We had nine and one was already off the market already. So we've narrowed it down to house number one and house number three. So we just called the um, listing the listing agents to get an update on the status of the homes, and both of them have um, multiple offers already submitted. So we have to kind of just you know get it together and see if we want to submit an offer and what that offer price is going to be. This is just one of those situations where it's going to come down to who has the best offer because this is just going to be on the seller side. We don't nothing we can do. So more than likely, the client will either have to be willing to offer more than the asking price or maybe not ask for contribution to closing or something like that. So we'll see what happens. Yes, we will. Real estate is hot in Houston. <laughs> Very hot. <laughs> so we went to lunch and <clears throat> gave our buyer his options. So go ahead, mom. Okay, so we narrowed Wait, which it down way is 99? to that way. Then. Okay, what we narrowed it down so to? So we what? we narrowed it down to two homes that he is interested in purchasing. Um, after talking to both listing agents, um, they are all they're both going to be in what's called multiple offer situations. Um, mm -hmm. So we decided on which one he's most interested in so we're gonna head back to the office and put an offer together and hopefully he can get it but the details is so the asking price on the house is 185 $185,000 um, and the carpet in the home is a little raggedy so they were willing to contribute $3,500 for carpet so what are we gonna do to make that work so what we're gonna do since they were gonna give thirty five hundred dollars for carpet anyway we're gonna lower the asking price by thirty five hundred and then because we are in multiple offer situation I'm gonna we're gonna add back a thousand dollars offer a thousand dollars over asking price so technically we're lowering the sales price by only about 2500 instead of 3500 instead of 3500 because at the end of the day it's all about what the seller is going to net at closing correct okay update you later so we're headed into the office now to write up the contract and I don't know if I mentioned um, we're writing up the contract for the first house that we saw the third one was beautiful but that one also had like 10,000 offers so Wish us luck. So we have submitted the offer for the first house that we took our buyer to see. Um, and the agent said that they had two already submitted offers. So our offer hopefully made the third one. And hopefully it's the best one. So either we'll find out either tonight because she wanted the offers all by 5 p.m. It is now 5.13. We submitted it about an hour ago. So either we'll find out what the, um, the seller accepts tonight or maybe like hopefully early tomorrow 
so we can give our buyer good news and we can move on in the process so this is just the first like really it's more of like the second step of the real estate process because the first step is getting um, pre-qualified for your loan you know seeing how much you can afford and things like that but he did that very quickly and now they went out yesterday and looked at a few houses and some of the houses the price range that he thought he wanted to be in um, wasn't fitting with what he wanted to pay monthly so real estate here in Texas is is amazing honestly y'all you can get so much house for so little money you know compared to places like New York so he doesn't want to spend more than fifteen hundred dollars a month for his mortgage so that allows him to buy a house that is about a hundred and eighty thousand to a hundred and eighty five thousand yesterday the houses they were looking at were more of like 190 to 200 so it was just a little too high for him so we went back out today obviously lowered the price range found some houses and we found one so that's always a plus it's always nice when you're working with buyers that aren't super like not not to say that you can't be picky when you're buying a home obviously you can be that's definitely your right because you're you know for most people sorry okay but what I was saying is that you know I, I would never say that you can't be picky when buying a home because it's the biggest purchase oh my gosh it's so much better it's the biggest purchase that most people make in their lifetime unless you're like a crazy rich millionaire billionaire and then you're probably buying all kind of stuff but you do have to realize that it's a competitive market especially here in Texas like real estate you know it goes it's quick it sells things don't stay on the market that long especially in that price range and you can get really nice houses in that price range so you have to be willing to kind of give or take here and there so um, our buyer was you know really good with that he wasn't like overly picky or nitpicky about little things you know he just wanted a, a nice house you know a little on the newer side kind of 2000 and up even though that one was 1998 you know it only had one person that has lived in that house um, recently you know he did some nice updates to it it's well kept so that that's all he needs so it's 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 always a blessing when you get an easy buyer so yeah I'm just um, I'm really missing my real estate life I love flight attendant world y'all know I love it I love it I love it but you know this is the career that I was doing before I started flying and I have a really big passion for this too. So it'll be nice when I'll have that flexibility to um, really get back in the game and be more hands on with my clients again. Because as of right now, everybody that pretty much hits me up wanting to do anything with real estate, I just refer them to my mom and I get paid 25% just to say, hey, I'm giving you this person that wants to buy a house. It's not a bad deal at all. I'm not going to ever complain about that. That's amazing too. <laughs> but I just miss the interaction that I get to have with the clients and build that rapport and things like that. So anyways, y'all, I will give you an update whenever we find out if the buyer accepted or declined our buyer's offer. And yeah, that's that. Hi guys. So just wanted to give y'all an update about the offers we put in yesterday for the homes. We didn't get it. They accepted a cash offer and cash offers are just hard to beat y'all. I mean, who doesn't want cash? Cash is quick. You don't have to go through the loan process. The money is there. Just buy the house and go. So we'll be having to, um, well, my mom, because I have to go back to work. We'll be having to go back out and take him back out to look for some more houses. I just wanted to give y'all a little update on that. There's three ways to make money with Keller Williams. The first way is literally sitting at the table because you have a buyer seller and that is a commission check. The second way is referrals. You're telling everybody from LA to New York as well as international that if they ever need a realtor to call you first. The third way is profit share. So what we mean by that is when you bring somebody to Keller Williams and they sponsor you, Every time they, you have a closing and you contribute to the profits, that the owners will celebrate with you and give you a profit share check. Okay guys, so I told y'all Lee did not get the um, 
they accepted someone else's offer. They accepted a cash offer over our very well written financed offer. So while I'm a little salty about it, because I am tired, <laughs> I have to say, I feel a little better knowing it was a cash offer and not another financed offer that I lost out to. But needless to say, I am tired. So, Mommy's gonna have to take him back out to look for some more properties, hopefully within the week or so. On Tuesday, on his day off. His and day off. Um, we have extended his search area. search area. So hopefully that would give us a better chance of finding exactly what he's looking for and won't have so much competition to with offers. Houston is hot. Multiple offers. You want to sell? Call me. <laughs> sell or buy or lease or commercial. We do it all. Homes done right. <laughs> so that's going to be the end of the vlog, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed this real estate vlog. I don't vlog about it much. There shall be more to come, though. Maybe with mommy in it, too. <laughs> don't forget. To Maybe I'll be a little happier. <laughs> She's, yeah, she needs a margarita or something. I do. <laughs> I need a swamp thing. <laughs> don't know. Papa Do's, swamp thing. Y'all probably don't know what Papa Do's is. Go to Atlanta, Houston. Where else is Papa Do's? Uh, down the street. <laughs> don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Ooh. See y'all in the next one. Bye. Ciao.